Hi, how are you doing this week? Hope you're well. You might be wondering, why is Matthew sitting in his car? Well, uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about baptism in the Holy Spirit. And uh, we're following on the series that Dan started last week on the book of Acts. And it's going to be a great, exciting series, I know. And uh, I think sometimes that baptism in the Holy Spirit can be seen as a bit of an extra, a sort of optional extra, a bit like cruise control is on this car for the discerning driver. Um, but I think that actually that isn't the case. That was never the case of what Jesus came to do. Jesus wanted baptism in the Holy Spirit to be something for every believer that uh, with the task that he'd given them to reach all the world with the gospel, that he wanted them to have the power of God to enable them to do it, that they wouldn't just wear out in their own strength trying to make it all happen, but actually they would have this endowment of power that would come down from God himself and fill them on a daily basis, uh, not just for a short time as it was in the Old Testament, but forever. Jesus is saying in Acts 1, that actually I am going in order to be able to send the Holy Spirit to you who will fill you with power. And it's this power that we're talking about, this power that enables us to be able to do all things through Christ that strengthens us. This power that actually fills us when we're feeling a bit low, when we actually need to know what to say to our neighbor, to share the gospel, what to say to a friend who's troubled and in need. What We need this power of God and God gives us that power through baptism in the Holy Spirit. Baptism of fire that John the Baptist spoke about is going to not be baptizing in water like John the Baptist had been but he was going to be baptizing people with fire. And he predicted that actually this Messiah was going to bring this new baptism. This was a radical turning in the history of the church. The day of Pentecost, which is what we're looking at today, was the day when everything changed, when the power of God was made evident and real for every single believer in God. And they, that wasn't always the case. Uh, in the Old Testament, we see that it was really, the, the Holy Spirit came on certain people, often kings or prophets or something like that, but usually for a specific purpose. And often we know exactly their names and who those People were So we, for example, in Judges 6, see that Gideon, uh, when he was uh, attacking the camp of the Midianites, the, it says that the, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And we see the same thing uh, described later in the same book about Samson. That actually it was the Spirit of God that came on him that gave him power. This wasn't his own power. This was something that God came on him. The very Spirit of God came on him, endued him with power in order for him to go out. We see uh, Saul uh, when uh, he was... Um, just walking and then he came he stumbled upon uh, a whole procession of the prophets and suddenly it says he too was suddenly overcome by the power of the holy spirit the spirit of god was on him such that he fell down and he started to prophesy but as we see in the old testament it was for certain people for certain times for certain purposes the change that was going to happen through Jesus Christ was that the Holy Spirit was going to be given to all people. And we see this in the, through the prophet Joel, Joel 2. And I think one of the key, often we kind of talk about 
you know, old men shall dream dreams and young men will see visions. But actually what's important to see it is that the Holy Spirit was going to be for all, it says. And the Holy Spirit was actually going to be poured out on men and women uh, for servants, it talks about, that actually there's going to be a kind of, this is going to be for every Tom, Dick and Harry that knows Jesus Christ was actually going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. This was a total change that the Old Testament didn't know of. They looked ahead, they waited in anticipation for that day when the very power of God was going to come for all men and women. And this is the day that we're talking about, the day of Pentecost. Jesus, in John 14, promises that he is going to send a comforter or an advocate, the Holy Spirit. He, he says who he is going to be. Remember, so he, not a it. Okay. And he's going, he is going to send, Jesus is going to send him in order that even though he is going, that he's actually sending his comforter, the Holy Spirit of God, to be with the church, with the disciples. And one of the key things is, he says, he will be with you forever. This forever is important because, as we said before, Samson, it was on him for just a very short time. The same for Gideon, the same for, for all of them, Saul and so on, in the Old Testament. But he's saying, no, no, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. It's not just given for a task and then taken away again. No, no, the Holy Spirit's going to be given to you and it's going to remain with you forever. The world cannot receive him, the Holy Spirit, because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. Notice that. Jesus is saying to his disciples, this is before the cross, he's saying, no, you, know, you know him, but I'm telling you there's going to be a day soon where he's, he's not just going to be on you, he's going to be in you. There's a, a very important difference. This is amazing, amazing news that actually God gives us his very spirit to dwell in us. He resides in us. We get baptized by the Holy Spirit. He comes on us and then he fills us and he's in us. I think one of the greatest tricks of the enemy is actually to downplay how important the day of Pentecost was to planet Earth and to the uh, progress of the church. This was a total game changer for the church this day. Because this was the day when they had the power of God come on them. And we read in it that actually, and we're going to just read it in a second, that uh, the power of God comes on them. This is not just some added luxury. This isn't some added extra like cruise control on the car. This was for all believers, for everyone, forever. Men, women, any believer, child too, any believer that actually believes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they could receive. And we're going to read this now. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames of, or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. 
and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Notice the word suddenly. Suddenly the Holy Spirit came on them. They had been waiting in the upper room for many days. They had been obedient. Jesus said, wait in the upper room before I send this Holy Spirit to you, this comforter. And so they were waiting obediently. And then one day, suddenly, they hear this mighty crashing noise, like wind, like a roaring that is happening. And they see, so they hear, and they see these tongues of fire on each person. Isn't that amazing? This is exactly what John the Baptist prophesied. Jesus was coming and was going to be baptizing with fire. A couple of years ago, I had the uh, privilege of praying with Johan, who is a part of our church. And we were at a conference uh, where they were, they were talking about baptism in the Holy Spirit. And he turned to me and he said, Matthew, I, I want this baptism in the Holy Spirit. He, he was a relatively new believer. Um, he had really, he'd, he'd done pod and he'd, uh, with Guy and he, he'd done all those things. And actually he, he'd come to an understanding of who Jesus Christ was for him personally. But he hadn't really had this experience of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. So I said, sure, I'll pray with you. So I started praying for him. And suddenly he started to shake. And, and then I saw him, he was kind of like brushing his shirt off like this. And uh, after, after a few minutes, he kind of stopped and he opened his eyes and he said, I just feel like I've just got fire just all over my body. And I was amazed because Johan hadn't read this passage. He didn't know that actually the Holy Spirit came in power on the disciples in the upper room uh, in Acts 2. And yet he was describing exactly the same thing. He experienced, not just by faith, but he experienced what seemed like, remember the scripture, what seemed like tongues of fire. There wasn't, you know, I was there with Johan. There was not fire kind of coming off his shirt, okay? <clears throat> but it seemed like for him that there was fire, okay? And there, there is this link again where uh, Jesus' baptism in fire is kind of the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit is linked with fire, the fire of God coming and giving us power. Talking of power, um, <laughs> this week has been really a difficult week for me uh, in, in, in lots of different ways. But probably the key thing was uh, frying my Max motherboard. Um, totally my own fault. Um, I was kind of downloading a program uh, that was coming across and I suddenly realized that it, that it was going to run out of hard disk space on the Mac. And uh, so I quickly hurriedly kind of grabbed a external hard drive to kind of plug it in. Um, don't we always make mistakes when we're actually in a rush? I was in a rush and I kind of, I, I plugged it in and I must have got the wires just confused uh, and plugged in the wrong thing. Um, and and suddenly I looked at my screen that I could see this downloading happening and suddenly <laughs> it all went completely blank. For some moments afterwards, I hurriedly tried to kind of pressing lots of buttons, pushing in, starting it again, absolutely blank. I realized that <laughs> I, I, whatever I had done uh, actually caused quite a serious problem. I had no power at all coming into the Mac and it was going to need uh, an expert to actually sort the whole thing out. 
if anybody's looking for a, a cheap uh, Mac that actually doesn't work anymore, then just let me know. Uh, uh, so, um, and I, uh, when I kind of consider the Holy Spirit and what Jesus was really coming and talking to his disciples about, I think it was the same thing. I think he's saying, this isn't just an added extra. This isn't something that you might want to consider. This was something that actually you desperately need. I don't want to send you on your way with this task of going into all the world, preaching the gospel to Jerusalem and Judea and to the ends of the earth. I want to give you the power to enable you to do that. I need to give you the power from God. I've had the power. People have seen the power on me. They've, they, they've been in awe at actually the power of God on me to, to lay hands on the sick and see them made well. I don't want to leave you short. I don't want you just wearing out uh, without this power that is from God. I want to be able to send this power. But first he had to go to the cross and then he had to go back to be with the Father and then he was going to send the Holy Spirit. So this day of Pentecost was the day that they received the Holy Spirit. I want to um, really leave you with three key things that I think are really helpful in this to actually help you. If you haven't been ever filled with the Holy Spirit, and it's not you either you either know that or if you don't really know then you probably haven't been god wants you to know the power of god the first point is that you need to believe that actually this is for you and is for every single christian in the new testament as soon as people came to faith, as soon as they believed the word that they preached, immediately, it says, they prayed for the Holy Spirit to come on them. They, that was the next thing, because they weren't going to say, yeah, you, you, we want you to be a believer, but not have the power to actually live this Christian life and to fulfill the task and the commission that God's given us to do. But you've got you've to know that actually it is for you, that it's not just an optional extra for a certain select people. It, that really is wrong and it's an error of understanding. Just look, look at your Bible and you will see that it is for all people and it is for you and it is for me and God's given it to us in order to help us to fulfill the task he's given us to do. So that's the first point. The second point is picking out of Luke 11, 13, where it says, Jesus is talking about, uh, he gives a, a, quite a, a, a long example of actually a father and a son. And surely if a son asks for you know, bread, he's not gonna give him something something other than that you know if he asks for a fish he's not going to give him something nasty and he he finishes up by saying the far if you ask the father for the holy spirit surely our gracious and good father will give you the holy spirit this second point is that all you have to do is ask and know that our gracious good father will give you the Holy Spirit. And the third point, it's just I want to kind of leave you with a uh, quote from D.L. Moody. Moody was a evangelist and he was in Edinburgh and he saw great revival happening even the church building kind of was affected by that we that we have is actually affected by the ministry of D.L. Moody in terms of the number of people that were coming to faith at that time. And this is what he said. Um, Trying to do the Lord's work in your own strength is the most confusing, exhausting and tedious of all work. 
But when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, then the ministry of Jesus just flows out of you. God doesn't want us to wear out. God wants us to finish the race he's given us to do. And he hasn't left us short. He's given us the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to do that. So can I just say this week, as you're just meditating on this word, just look at the scriptures again. If, if that hasn't happened for you, it's God's earnest desire that actually that happens. Speaking on behalf of the elders, it is our earnest desire that actually you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Get in touch with your small group leader. Talk to an elder. Say, this is what I want to happen. I know it's hard right now in terms of the whole lockdown. Uh, it's much more difficult, but let's find a way through and say, I earnestly desire to be baptized. I need this power in my life. God bless you. Have a great week.